Well, here we are. I don't even know where to begin. I'll begin with, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love my wife. I have the most beautiful wife in the world. Not only are you the prettiest person in the whole world, you are smart, caring, and loving. I can already tell that you're going to be an awesome mother to our kids just by the way you are around our nephew case. It makes me smile. I want to thank you for never giving up on us through all the ups and downs. Uh, we have gotten so much stronger over the years, which all led up to where we are now. I also want to thank you for all your hard work on the wedding. I also should probably admit that I couldn't have done it without you. So here it is. Erica, I could not have done this without you. The wedding planning has been very stressful for mainly you, yes, but also for me. But we never gave up. Look at what we created, it's beautiful. Just like you. <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot wait for the future, what the future has in store for us. I wish us nothing but the best. We are going to have the perfect family. I cannot wait to start building our forever home, get a dog, name him Buck, have a baby, name him Buck, or Bucklin, depending on the gender. And of course, more babies, and then, and, and name them after hunting too. <laughs> well, this piece of paper is filling up, yes, but mainly because I tried to write a little bit bigger. So I better tell you, I better tell you that I love you so much and I always have and I always will. I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I promise to be all I can be, the best father, husband, and person. I, I promise, <laughs> now I'm getting choked up. I promise that I will protect our family forever. <clears throat> I love you. I love. <laughs> I love you, stinky butt. We did it. We're married. Wow. This is it. A new chapter. A new chapter that starts now. Love always, Blake. Blake, it seems just like yesterday we were hiking up and down the Colorado mountains on that beautiful Labor Day weekend. In our backpacks, more bush light than water, not enough food, and little did I know, the most beautiful engagement ring. As I sit here at 4.30 in the morning, candles lit, fire going, and on my second cup of coffee, writing this letter to you, I can't help but think back to how our story started and where we are now. I would be lying if I said God didn't put us through the ringer a few times, but we came out of every situation stronger and wiser as a team. Despite the challenges, there have always been better times. We have so many beautiful memories made already, up north, out west, and down south. I think we need to go to Maine soon so I can say out east, too. I so look forward to creating many more memorable moments with you. I'm going to end this with a short list of reminders. One, continue to make me laugh every day. Two, putting a garbage can, put, putting a garbage bag in the can after taking the garbage out does not break your arms or cause any injuries. Three, our forever anniversary date is October 6th. Four, making the bed every once in a while also does not cause any injuries. And five, I love you and I haven't stopped since the first day I started. Everyone tells me our day will go by so fast, so let's try to slow it down, savor every moment, and celebrate you and I. I love you so much, Blake Ronald Stuffel. I can't wait to become husband and wife and do life together. See you at the end of the aisle. Love, Erica. Blake and Erica, today is your day. And though it signifies the end of planning, waiting, anticipating, working on this beautiful barn. Turned out great, by the way. It really is a beginning. It is a beginning of a lifelong adventure. 
And my prayer for both of you today is that it would be an adventure worth taking. And that it would be an adventure where you don't end up surviving, but you end up thriving. And towards that end, I'd like to share with you a couple last thoughts on a thriving marriage to help you have the best adventure possible. 25 points in all, there will be a test at the end. I'm just kidding, just kidding. How about five? Five thoughts for you that I've been given or read over the years from people, thankfully, a lot smarter than me. And my prayer today is that these thoughts will help guide you and help you have a long, rewarding, thriving adventure. Now, Blake, a wise man once said, there are two times in a man's life when he doesn't completely understand the woman he loves, before and after the wedding. You probably noticed by now that you two were created differently. You have different personalities, you're wired differently, you react to situations differently, process information differently, show emotion differently. And it's no coincidence that in Genesis, the writer says God gave Adam a helpmate. Not a twin, not a servant, not a duplicate, but a teammate. So you have two options moving forward. You can spend the rest of your marriage celebrating your differences, leveraging them to build a really strong marriage, or you can spend the rest of your life trying to mold the other person to be just like you. By the way, that doesn't work. You can fight your differences and spend the rest of your life trying to make the other person more like you, or you can choose to celebrate the fact that God created you very different. Don't fight your differences. Don't allow your differences to be a source of contention. Laugh. Laugh at yourselves and your differences and the way that you look at things differently and leverage them to make your marriage stronger. So my first thought for you today is number one, celebrate your differences. No, in all seriousness, there's a misconception that happens that sometimes when you get married, you think the hard work is over. But the great work of a thriving marriage has just begun. So go on date nights. Spend time together. Spend a lot of time together.
You have an option moving forward. You can aim to have a marriage that survives or a marriage that thrives. Marriages that thrive make the marriage a priority. They carve out time and money for date nights. They put the marriage before friends, jobs, and even kids when they come. Marriages that thrive put in work, but the reward of a thriving marriage is definitely worth the payoff. A thriving marriage depends on two things, finding the right person and being the right person. Will you both stand here today acknowledging and proclaiming that you have found the right person? So from this day forward, you get to spend the rest of your life being the right person. Being the best friend, cheerleader, lover, teammate that you can be for your spouse. Remember in any conversation, decision, or argument, no one wins unless you both win. You're now a team.